We're now joined by Kansas City Fed President Thomas Honig. Great to see you, President Honig. Thank you. It's good to be with you. And you are the one member of the Fed that has been critical of 0% interest rates. Why do you dissent the 0% interest rate policy? I think it's important to realize that 0% was a rate that was necessary during the crisis, and I think it uh, served its purpose. But now we have to think beyond that to a little longer term, and there are adverse effects, I think, from zero uh, being carried. One of those, it does penalize the saver and discourages savings in that sense. And secondly, I think it also may interfere with the bank credit granting process. For example, if you think about it, a large bank or a bank can access funds uh, for near zero percent, and then because of what the Federal Reserve's policy is providing, then turn around and loan that money back to the government by buying securities uh, for three or four percentage points more. Why would the Fed support a policy that is basically only benefiting the banks right now and penalizing savers in this country? Well, the idea behind it is that you make credit uh, less expensive for businesses, for others, because you have a very low interest rate and that you're also helping mortgage credit uh, by keeping interest rates very low. And that a goal, uh, I think, is a, a, a very fine goal, but you have to think not just about what the immediate uh, goal is in terms of these low interest rates, but what the longer term consequences of that are. And so what you really want is an interest rate that is more balanced, and I think uh, getting away from zero will bring a greater uh, rational markets and I think in the long run benefit us all uh, more than trying to keep them low indefinitely right now. Have zero percent interest rates served their goal? I think that zero percentage rate uh, has served its purpose. I think we need to move beyond that back towards more rational level, what I call a more normal monetary policy. Now remember, what I'm also saying is I'm not advocating for high interest rates. That's not something we want to see either. We want to get off of zero, let the markets begin to work, not guarantee a margin to the banks so that they're more interested in making loans to businesses and more uh, willing to because it's where they can get a return, but to do it very cautiously. A lot of market watchers and participants would say they expect 0% interest rates for at least another year, possibly. What happens under that scenario? Do small businesses get more loans, or does the money basically go back into the market, back into treasuries, in this basically fixed trade where people can make a lot of money? Well, I, I think if they're going to keep interest rates this low for another year, I think there are risks from doing that. Uh, as you have seen in the past period, what this does is it does encourage the reestablishment of uh, debt. It does encourage debt over savings, uh, and therefore you will uh, risk at the other end of this having an economy that is still too highly leveraged. And remember, it does create a step, a series of imbalances. We have a very serious fiscal deficit. This will encourage that to continue. We have a very serious international uh, trade balance uh, because uh, we will be still wanting to to uh, have buying goods because we are favoring consumption. So those are all consequences from an extended period of very low interest rates that we have to be mindful of as we go through the policy choices that lie ahead. In layman's terms, what would happen under 0% interest rates and what happens to people's savings in this country? Well, with a 0% interest rates, uh, you, you know, if, if I take a certain amount of my paycheck and I'm putting in savings, I can get almost nothing for it. So why would I save? I might as well uh, in, in, uh, buy goods. The other thing that is happening is people do tend under those circumstances to buy assets, uh, whether it's land uh, or whether it's uh, gold or whatever, as they think about these very low interest rates for an extended period and what the inflation might be for that in our country. So they begin to think about where they put their money to protect themselves, and that does create uh, a tendency for asset values to increase. Where we want in this country certain asset values to go up, but even with 0% interest rates, that hasn't happened. 
for example, housing. We want asset values to stabilize, and I don't know that we necessarily want them to go up or go down. We want them to stabilize, and we want uh, uh, people to be willing to spend and to invest in productive goods. That's really what we want. And what I worry about with a zero interest rate is you create the conditions. I, I can't predict bubbles, asset bubbles, but I know that we create the conditions that will cause uh, asset bubbles in the future unless we adjust our policy uh, from off of zero in a very careful, systematic way. In the long run, what's a normal interest rate policy that we should be striving for in this country? If you think about where interest rates, policy rates should be over time, they should be somewhere 3% or slightly higher or 4% depending on what the inflation rate is. So what I've suggested in my comments in the dissents and in my speeches is we want to move from zero to one percent over a three to six month period. We want to explain that to the public and then we want to pause and see how the economy is proceeding. Is it continuing to grow steadily? Are we seeing some job improvements? And then as we look at that, then as investment improves, companies begin to invest, then we would raise it again towards a more normal level. So then you begin to see savings increase, encouraging savings that match investment, that move our economy forward in a systematic way. And what we've been doing in this country, understandably, is we've been using the savings from the rest of the world. That's why we have run such large trade and uh, current account balances. But you can't do that indefinitely. No country can, not even the United States. So what we have to do over time, a long period of time is improve our savings level so that we can invest and support ourselves domestically. But I do feel very uh, firm in my view that we need to uh, in, move ourselves off of zero in a, in a fairly deliberate time period ahead, not a year or two years from now, but fairly immediately. Thank you so much, President Honig. My pleasure to be with you and thank you.